Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum, dear students. Welcome to your course, Introduction to Morphology of Angiosperms. Uh, I'm here, your course instructor, Muhammad Bukas. Uh, today is lecture number 13. And as you know, in the previous lectures, we had studied the angiospermic plants, their different parts like the root system the function of the root system, the modification of the root system. In addition, we had also studied the stem, their different functions, their modifications. Uh, in addition, we have also studied somehow the angiospermic leaves. Uh, and the remaining we will cover in this lecture. The agenda for today's discussion is, uh, as we have studied, the leaf, the simple leaf, the compound leaf, and in the compound leaf, we had also started uh, the pinnate and uh, palmate leaf. Uh, we will go through the pinnate and palmate leaf, and after that, we will deeply discuss the pinnate leaf and their different uh, divisions like uh, unipinnate leaves, bipinnate leaves, tripinnate leaves, decompound leaves. In addition, we will also study the leaf arrangement of uh, angiospermic plants. And at the end, we will study the leaf modifications uh, in the angiospermic uh, plants. First of all, we will go through uh, just a reminder about the pinnate and palmate leaf. Uh, as you see in this figure, in palmate leaf, as I told you, palm, it's uh, similar to palm, that all the fingers are arise from a single uh, point. Similarly, uh, like the palmate leaf, in palmate leaf leaves, the leaflets emerge from a single point at the end of a uh, petiole. As you can see in this figure, the examples of uh, palmate leaves uh, is uh, poison ivy and the most familiar house plant that is uh, umbrella plant. Similarly, what is pinnate leaf? In pinnate leaves, a row of leaflets, as you can see in this figure, a row of leaflets forms on either side of extension of the petiole, right? That is called ricus. This is the ricus, as you can see in this figure. So, the leaflet arises on either side of video that is called ricus. And the example of uh, pinnate uh, leaves is, uh, is walnut, black locust, honey locust, mountain ash, Kentucky, yellow wood, etc. We had studied in previous lecture about palmate leaf compound leaf so uh, we will go forward as uh, now we will talk about the pinnate leaf compound leaf going deep inside the pinnate leaf uh, the pinnate leaf branch again to different uh, sets that result to different compoundness uh, of uh, the pinnate leaf as you can see uh, in this figure for example this is the unipinnate that further divides into different sets like bipinnate that is pinnate two times two times after that the another set of uh, branched uh, pinnate system is the tripinnate that is the pinnate it three times first second and three times and the fourth one is the decompound uh, leaves pinnate leaf now we will study one by one that what is pinnate, unipinnate, what is bipinnate, what is tripinnate, and what is a decompound pinnate leaves. The first one is a unipinnate. If we describe what is unipinnate leaf, if a leaflet arises on primary ricus, as you can see in this figure, if a leaflet arises on primary ricus itself 
it is known as uni pinnet uni mean one time pinnet one time are simply we can say that having leaf light the leaflets on each side of an x as i told you you can see in this figure leaflets at each side of axis for example neem plants are acacia uh, uh, plant i am going to add something uh, new here that if there is an odd number of leaflets then it is known as imperipinnate uh, compound leaf i i this i have already told in the previous lecture to you and if there is an even number of leaflets then it is known as peripinnate leaf uh, compound leaf so you should to keep these uh, in your mind the second one is bipinnate bi mean two as the name indicate pinnately two times if a primary rhachis get branched once and the leaflet arise on the secondary rhachis as you can see in this figure this is the primary rhachis this is branched uh, uh, once branched again and the leaflet arise on the secondary rhachis then it is known as bipinnately compound leaf or if you make it too much simple the central axis produce secondary axis this is the central axis and this produce a secondary axis as you can see in this figure and the secondary axis bear leaflets and the example is the most common on touch me not plant in acacia plant the third one in the pinnate uh, compound leaf uh, is the tripinnate leaves what is tripinnate leaves if the rhachis get branch twice as you can see in this figure first second and at the third here are the leaflets if the rhachis get branched twice and the leaflet arises on the tertiary rhachis this is the tertiary rhachis right then it is known as tripinnate leaf compound leaf or simply what we can say tripinnate leaf the secondary axis produce the tertiary axis this is the secondary axis and this is they give rise to the tertiary axis which bear the leaflets and the example of tripinnate compound leaf is moringa species the fourth one is d compound as the name indicate d compound fused if the rhachis get branched twice or more than twice and the leaflet rise on ultimate branches then it is known as d compound leaf or simply we can say that more than twice pinnate for example you can uh, easily saw the d compound leaf in coriander plant the second one is the pilotaxy of the leaves the are uh, uh, simply we can say the pilotaxy of the angiospermic leaves are in simple term the leaf arrangement on of uh, angiospermic plants there are different uh, arrangement of uh, leaves in the angiospermic plants among them the first one is the alternate as the name indicate alternate and here you can see in this figure a single leaf rising at each side of node one node one node in each side of node not in parallel and the example of uh, the alternate leaves is hibis hibiscus rosa sinensis plant similarly the second arrangement is the opposite leaves what does it mean the opposite leaves on different side leaves on different side of axis however with the bases at the same level as you can see in this figure bases at the same level how uh, uh, it comprised of two different types the first one is opposite decussate what what is opposite decussate uh, leaves the opposite decussate leaves are in pairs at right angle to each other here you can see that these pairs are right angle to each other 
the example of opposite decussate leaves are Calotropis procera species. Similarly, the second type of opposite leaf is opposite superposed, as the name indicates, superposed in which a pair of leaves that extend directly over the lower pair but in the same plane. For example, the leaves uh, uh, of guava plant. Right? The third one is the world arrangement of leaves as the name indicate world coil in the world arrangement of the leaf more than two leaves arranged in a circle round an axis here you can see in this figure and the example of world uh, leaves are uh, spergula species the fourth one is the leaf uh, uh, modification in the angiospermic uh, uh, plants. As you know that plants have changed themselves to adapt to their environment in very excellent way. And among them, the one is the modification of leaves. The leaves are part of leaves are often modified for specific functions uh, for example for climbing and substrate attachment storage for protection against radiation and climatic conditions as well as trapping and digesting of different uh, insect prey. in modification the first one is the modification into spines in most uh, xerophytes, what are xerophytes? Xerophytes are the plants that grow in deserts, or simply we can say the plants that grow in the region with water scarcity, like Opuntia. The leaves are reduced to spine, as you can see in Opuntia plant. The leaves are mod reduced, or simply we can say modified into uh, spines. And the stem is modified into storage parts, which store water for the plant. They also become green and take the responsibility of leaf. What are responsibility of leaf? As I had told you, the photosynthesis, right? Uh, similarly, the spines will also be found in some other plants like acacia, as you can see in this figure. It's acacia plant that grow. And survive well in drought condition they are they are also useful in absorbing the droplets of water uh, during the fog the second one in leaf uh, modification is the succulent leaves uh, some plants like uh, aloe vera here is the picture of aloe vera have managed to grow fleshy leaves that serve as the storage parts for water as well as also act as the reserve reservoir for the reserve materials the plants can survive for months for several months uh, without even a single drop of water but even if it gets a little amount of water the entire plants uh, because in the absence of water, the plant sometimes may uh, turn brown, but even after getting a little amount of water, the entire plants turn green in very little time, like uh, in a days. The third one in the leaf modification are the modification of leaves into tendrils. Uh, as you can see in this figure, in climbers, uh, the leaf of plants would modified into elongated structure as you can see uh, in this figure to help the plant climb efficiently uh, the tendrils are basically are uh, different types four different types of tendrils are there uh, the leaves may sometimes get modified into tendrils where the apical leaves are modified into tendrils in some plants, the petioles are elongated and they are 
and they graze the nearby plants for getting supports. Similarly, the third one in some plant, the leaf tips get elongated and become uh, tendrils. And in the fourth type of tendril, in some plants, the entire leaf get modified into tendrils and the stipules expand to carry out the function of uh, leaves. The fourth one in leaf modification are the modification of leaves into hooks. Some plants modify their terminal leaflets into hooks that help the climbers to hold on uh, its substrate. For example, in Kate Claw plant, or simply we, uh, the scientifically we can say Bignonia cacti species, the terminal leaflets turns into three hooks. As you can see uh, in this figure, this is the Kate Claw plant uh, into three hooks and help the plant to climb on the substrate. The fifth one is the swollen petioles. As you can see in this figure, this is uh, a cornea plant, this is aquatic plant, have a swollen petioles that are filled with air that help the plants to float on the water. Similarly, the sixth one of the leaf modification into roots. In some plants like aquatic fern that is uh, Salvinina, Salvinia natans has three leaves that develop from each node. Each node give rise to three leaves. Among that, two of the three leaves float above the water while the third leaf is submerged and is modified into roots. And here you can see in this figure, the fifth one is the leaf modification into reproductive parts. In some plant like uh, Bryophyllum species produce adventitious birds along their leaf margins, right? These birds develop roots uh, while on parent plant and as they mature, as the birds get uh, roots get mature, the birds get mature, they fall off the plant and start growing into new plants when they land uh, the nearby soil. Or simply we can say by getting the favorable condition. The eight one is the leaf modification into traps. These plants grow basically the traps are grow in uh, nitrogen deficient places. So they modified themselves well to get the nitrogen. For example, the carnivorous plant like Nepenthes species, the leaves are modified into pod which is used to attract insects and some other tiny animals to fall inside and digest them. As here you can see, the leaves are modified into pods, right? So the inner wall, the inner wall secretes, the inner wall of the pod uh, secrete digestive enzymes that help digest the insects, insects and extract the nitrogen that needed for the plant development. Similarly, and uh, Drosera species, the leaf margin basically produce sticky substances that is irresistible to the insects and they fall for it, for these uh, sticky substances. Then the half rolls, the leaf rolls are, uh, are completely or halfly, the leaf rolls up to digest the dead insects. The ninth one in the leaf modification is the modification of leaf into uh, a phyllode. Basically, in some plant, the petiole expand to form a leaf-like structure like, uh, for example, in acacia species. And that leaf-like structure, they carried out the function of leaf, right? As here you can see in this figure. The true compound leaves uh, in pylod uh, uh, appear in young plants and they fall off as they start growing. 
how ever the true compound leaves may appear at the time of formation of seed but uh, mostly they are uh, short uh, lived uh, so this was uh, all about the remaining uh, information about uh, the angiospermic leaves uh, in next class we will go ahead uh, towards the reproduction system uh, in the angiospermic leaves uh, in the angiospermic plants uh, thank you so much for today class see you in next class